Assalamu alaikum. Starting with the name of Allah, the most beneficial and the most merciful. This is the continuation of the last lecture in which we have covered a manual examples for finding seismic design forces according to UBC 97 and following equivalent lateral force procedures. This was the example. In today's lecture, we are going to implement the same sort of example on ETAP software and using an Excel sheet which have been specifically developed for this purpose. Now let's start. This is a software ETAPS uh, version 2016. There are different versions. We will not focus on this lecture regarding the modeling concepts and other things. For these things, I will just suggest you to visit the YouTube channel. I will share the link on, on, on the comments and you can uh, you can view these videos here which contain different uh, steps like modeling, analysis and design using ETAP structures. So these are some of the videos I already shared. In this lecture we are particularly focusing on equivalent lateral force precision. So now let's start modeling this thing. The statement saying like determine the UBC 97 design seismic forces for a three-story concrete shear wall buildings. It is located in Southern East California rock with a shear wave velocity of 3000 feet. This Story heights are like 13 feet for first and 11 feet for the second and third floors. The red loads are given. So we are just going to model a 2D frame for this, this example and have a look like how, how ETAB is calculating the base shear, how it is uh, showing you the story forces and story shears and overturning moments. And we're going to compare these values with this manual calculation. With the tabs and also using an Excel sheet. So now let's start from E tab first. So you're gonna come to File and press the New Model. This dialog box, uh, you're just gonna put some grids like you have to model. So it will gonna ask you like how many grids you want that will cross the x-axis. So because we are going to model a 2D frame. So this is the frame we will just gonna model here with some story heights and all these things. So let's make two by default, it's two as well. Let it be like 24. Just change the number of story here because we have three stories in the example. If you look at here, we have been given like the building is a three-story concrete shear wall building. So we're just gonna change here like three. So typical story height and bottom story heights, we're going to choose the custom story data here and edit this one. So now put the story heights here. For story 1, the height is 13 feet and for the rest of the stories it is 11 feet. So we're going to put here like 13 feet, 11 feet and then 11 feet. So it will automatically create the elevation for each story. Now say OK. And uh, select from this option grid only. Okay. Select from here, like instead of one story, you put like all stories. Now draw columns. This is the option for drawing column. So select this one. Normally you have to specify the property, but for timing, because we are just doing the analysis, not the design. So the material and the sections are not important for us for time being. So I'm just going to draw a column here. And a column here so you can see the columns have been drawn here in all the three stories now draw a beam as well connecting these two columns this one so beam has been drawn on all the three stories and if you want to have it little extruded form so put it like this one apply and okay so this is the frame that looks like which has been drawn in zx plane I'm just gonna make it over here. Okay. So now the next thing is like uh, we have to enter some values here in E tabs. So I'm gonna start with the define. No need for these material and section properties because we are just focusing on the analysis, not on the design sections. 
but we do need uh, like a mass source because this is important ETAB needs to have this information like how much it will consider the seismic dead weights so we'll go for this one mass source modify this one and specify load patterns and it will ensure that all the dead loads are here with a multiplier one okay 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 the next thing we need to do is like uh, just go to the load patterns because in this examples we haven't covered them the cell fate of the the members like the cell fate of structure is not being considered here the only seismic dead weights are these one the story dead weights 2200 2700 kips for bottom up stories so you know, we need to ignore the cell fates so in tabs this this can be implemented by changing the cell fate multiplier here to zero modify this one so now ETHAB will not consider the dead loads or cell fate of the structures we are the one who will define these loads for ETAB the next thing we need to define earthquakes make it uh, seismic and choose UBC 97 because we are doing analysis according to UBC 97 and add new load now select this one and click modify later loads for time being we'll just focus on us the x direction only for our example the value of ct was considered 0 0.02 here you can see f for calculating the time period we had the formula t equal to ct into h n to power 3 by 4 so ct was 0 0.02 so we have to change it point zero two here. Base the story three over strength factor or response modification factor for numerical response modification factor was five point five. We already discussed how we have taken it from the UBC tables. So we're just gonna put it here five point five. Soil profile type it was given SB because it was a rock soil, so SB was being selected. So we're going to choose here SB. The seismic zone was 3. So I'll just going to select here seismic zone 3.3 .3 value. So it automatically have chosen the value of C and CV. All, all looks fine. So we're going to select OK here. OK. Now we need to apply these uh, loads. These story dead loads. We have to apply them on the structure instead of applying like point load we're just going to apply udl on these beams for example i'm just going to show you like 2200 on the bottom story this is like a point to 2200 kips so we will convert this kip load into udl uh, this is a beam which has like a length of 24 feet so the load on this this beam like i'm going to select this one and apply a load assign frame loads distributed I'm gonna make sure that this is dead because this is dead loads and instead of kips the option here is like kip per feet so the load for the bottom story is 2200 kips so so I'm gonna put it here 2200 divided by 24 so it will convert this this point load to a UDL this is the value say apply and OK. Now select the other beam. The loading is now 2000 kips. So select this one. Assign frame load distributed. And now instead of 2000, we're going to put 2000 divided by 24. Press enter. This is the load which has been applied here. The next one, the last one. It has a load of 1700 kips so you're gonna put it here 1700 divided by 24 this will be the load and apply it okay now just fix the supports here like then these supports or the supports go to assign joints restraints make them fix apply and okay so these have been fixed now. All the things look good now. So 
so just go for analyze so there is an option set active degree of freedom because it's not a full 3d model we are just analyzing a frame which is in xz plane so instead of full 3d you just gonna stick xz here okay now we're in analysis we need to save this model somewhere put it on desktop somewhere Open the folder, name the, the file. Save it. Now the analysis has been completed, so we will check the response of this frame structure. Now let's go to display, select show tables then analysis results select reactions and check with this base reactions in order to compare the base shear calculated by etaps select ok so in these load cases or combos right click and select earthquake ok so this is the fx value horizontal force or the sum of the lateral forces acting at the base of the structure and it is coming out to be 801.66 kips so the base shear which we manually calculated was 804.5 kips and the one calculated by ETAB is very close to this one now let us see other values go to display again you can check story response plots I'll just extend this one. Now on display types, you can select auto later loads to stories. Make sure that in load patterns, earthquake, EQ. So now this will show you the auto later forces which have been applied on each story level by ETABs. So you can actually see them in tabular form by clicking this one, formatted tables. So these are the values like third story will have a force of 350, then 282 and 168. When we go to the manual calculations, the top story F3 was having a 351, 283 and 169. So these are close to each other, 351, need have the value is 350 then 282 so it's 283 the last one is 169 so these are the story forces similarly you can also see the the story shears like this one from here and the overturning moments so now, now let's see story shears the line is like zero because the case or combo is dead so you need to make sure it's earthquake eq so now these are the story shears We again see them in tabular form by clicking on this one show tables formatted one so these are the values of 350 632 and then 801 350 635 and 804 these are the values of story shears which are similar to one calculated by etabs similarly the overturning moments can also be calculated See, this is a value. The maximum value of overturning is experience the base of the structure, and once you go at the height, the overturning moment is getting lower. The same um, phenomena was observed in manual calculation. So you can actually see the values here 3851, 10,000, and then 21. These values are similar to the values calculated in the manual calculations. This one 3689, 10,000, and 21,317. 21, so, this was um, the comparison between seismic analysis using manual calculation and the one performed by ETAPS.
now we will just look at uh, one of the excel sheets which have been developed for this process and check how the values are comparing to each other Let's save this one this is the sheet so you have to select appropriate units imperial or system international units you can put the building location here whatever you want the size big zone you need to make sure all the variables which are in these manual calculations or the inputs it should be very similar to here so that it can perform the same things so the first thing is seismic zone because in the manual calculations we have been given this information that the building is located in seismic zone 3 this is southern eastern california so it is located in seismic zone 3 the value of z was 0.3 so in manual calculation we will just going to select here z equal to 0.3 or seismic zone 3 structural important factor is 1 soil profile type the manual calculation it was given that the building is located on a rock so for rock thing we have a soil profile type SB from UBC so we will want to select here SB profile type and the total number of stories we have three number of stories here so it has calculated the values of CA and asking you to enter the values so we're just going to put it here 0.3 and again 0.3 here enter value of ct for manual calculation we know that time period is t equal to ct into h n to power 3 by 4 so this was h n total height of the building and this is the coefficient ct which has a value of 0 0.02 so we're just going to select here 0 0.02 it's same Okay, now coming toward this point, these are the story levels here because we have only three story levels. Story 1, this is the base, this is the story 1, story 2 and story 3, we don't need these things, so just delete this thing. So you need to enter the heights here. For story 1, the height was uh, 13 feet for the first story and 11, 11 feet for the second and third one. So you're going to put here 13 then 11 and then 11 feet now the next column is to enter the dead load in kips so the dead loads for the bottom story was 22 then 2700 2200 2000 and 1700 there was no live load so just enter the value 0 here 0 here and 0 here okay so it will perform all these calculations by itself. We can just press calculate overturning moments. Now see, it has calculated the value of lateral forces, or the story forces acting at each floor level. See the values 169, 283 and 351. So these are the values here, 351, 289 and 169. Similarly, the story shares, we're just going to compare these values. So for story shares, the values are these one. these are very similar to these ones see story shear for 1 is 804 here it is also 804 then for story 2 it is 635.4 so we have 635.48 so these are the story shear similarly the overturning moments have also been calculated these are the values for overturning moments 21317 for m1 21318 for m1 then m2 and m3 so and this is the sheet this was the first tab uh, you can have a summary of all this calculation on the last tab, which is the data tab. These are the values here. So this is uh, the end of the session. Hope so you have enjoyed this one. Thank you for watching.